So rotations, what are they? It's part of transformation geometry. Um, as I said, it's generally the final part in the higher level question. Generally, it, the order it goes in is uh, translation, axial symmetry, central symmetry, and then your rotation. Um, we talk a lot about object and image when we're talking about transformation geometry. So the object is what, guys, can you remember what the object is? The original, the original drawing. And then the original drawing undergoes certain transformations, and each one of them is known as its image. Okay? What doesn't change uh, in transformation geometry? Measurements, uh, including lengths, distances, angles, they all remain the same. Okay? Um, and rotations uh, is exactly the same, applies the same rules. Okay? So I've just an example up here of P and P1. And if we, we, we read just the, the little task that I've put up, P is rotated 120 degrees in a clockwise direction such that its image is P1. Okay? Right, we're given an awful lot of information there. First of all, we're told um, it's rotated 120 uh, degrees in a clockwise direction. Okay? Clockwise, when we're dealing with P and P1, P is going to P1. Is clockwise going off this way to the right or going back this way to the left? Which one is it? Going to the right. So it's going to be moving roughly in that direction. Am I right? We're all good with that, okay? And we're also told it's 120 degrees in a clockwise direction, okay? So the 120 degrees is another one. Now I'm just going to draw roughly a little circle here, okay? All right? And we're going to put P here. This is P, right? And we're told it's 120 degrees, okay? So roughly, let's, um, how many degrees, first of all, are in a circle? 360. So 120 degrees is going to be... If we were to do a, a, a pie chart, it would be a third, roughly a third. So it's going to look something like that, ain't it? Something like that. So this is P, and this is P1. It's all based around a circle. And what point are we looking for when we'll be working out this question? Point of rotation O, which is also known as the centre of our circle. Or the example I've used here, I just drew it out with the compass earlier. This is O, right? And just to go through it, it's, we, I, I'm just going to locate P anywhere here. And if someone could be as good as to give me the loan of a protractor, because I completely forgot I need a protractor, you might drop it up to me. So I'm just randomly going to pick my point P on the circle here. So this is P. And we're told that it needs to rotate clockwise 120 degrees. Thank you. All right? Rotate clockwise 120 degrees. So first of all, looking at the little sketch I've done here, what do I do with P? What's my first step? No, not straight down. You join it back to where? You join it back to the center point, okay? And then, what am I going to measure off from the center point? 120 degrees. And I know now you're looking at the question over there saying, but sure, we don't have the center point, but just bear with me. So I'm going to measure 10, 20, all the way around and measure off my 120 degrees, right? And join that back. And where it crosses the circle here, this is my new point P, P1, and that's the image of P, okay? Let's just rewind a little bit now and go back here because when I was using the circle, I was working under the assumption that we were given the center point, but we're not given the center point, okay? So that, that's a new challenge uh, that we have. If we were to go over to what I was just working on, and if we were to draw a line between P and P1, okay? P and P1. All right, does that help us in any way? Yeah, it's a triangle. It's a triangle, yeah. So... What do we know about a triangle? I'm just going to write it here. It's a triangle. What do we know? How many degrees are in a triangle? 180 degrees. Very good. What sort of a triangle does that look like? An isosceles triangle. Tell me about an isosceles triangle. Both what? Two angles are the same and two sides are the same. So looking at this isosceles triangle, would it be a fair assumption to say that angle one here and angle two here are the two angles that are the same, yeah? 
would it be fair to assume that OP and OP1 are the two sides that are the same length? Would that be a fair assumption to make? Yeah? Okay, so I want us to move back up to this part of the question and try and uh, use what we were talking about here, apply it to this problem that we have here. What would be the first step that I'd need to take? They're not dots. Li li you, you use the labeling. We join P and P1. So we join the object to its image. Okay? That's step one done. Okay? Okay, we're hearing lots of angles here. We're hearing 120 and we're hearing 30 degrees. And just to go back to our question here, it's all based around maths. We're told that in our triangle, I'm going to draw it out again, we have 180 degrees. Okay. In the question, we're told that one of the angles is 120 degrees. So if I take 120 from my 180, that leaves me with 60 degrees. Okay, so I have 60 degrees left to allocate to two angles, angle one and angle two. What sort of triangle did we say it was? An isosceles. And an isosceles has two angles that are equal. So therefore, if we divide our 60 by two, the angles that we have to work with are 30 degrees. So very simply, I use my 30 degree set square or my protractor and I'll measure off at 30 degrees from P. And, and P1, okay? Is my center point going to be here? Or is it going to be up here? It's going to be below because my, uh, I'm rotating it in a clockwise direction. So, again, I'm going to work with P1 first there, okay? And I'm going to measure off 10, 20, 30 degrees. Making a little mark here. And draw my line, okay? Right, I'm going to do the same from P. Okay, 10, 20, 30 degrees. And draw my line. And that point there where they cross is, what's it called? The origin, yeah. Or my point of rotation or center of rotation. Is that okay? And let's say, for example, very quickly now, if I draw on, if I tag on a few other little parts onto this here, if I tag on, make it a triangle as well. So I have two more points. Points Q and R. So it's no longer now just one point that we're moving. It's, it's, it's a whole shape that we're moving. So P, first of all, if I rotate it around, you can see it rotates around, just like it rotates around here. So if I wanted to do that for point R, what would I do? I draw a line between O and R. Yeah. And what do I do? Measure off 120 degrees. Now that I have my my point of rotation, it, it becomes a hell of a lot easier. So I measure off 10, 20, all the way to 120 degrees, and I draw my line out here. And somewhere along this line lies my new point, my new point for R, which would be R1. So what I do, put the point of my compass at O, extend it to R, and I swing it, this is R1. This is R1 here. Are we good with that? Yeah? And I would do the same for Q. Any questions? No. Okay. What I'm going to get you to do in a second now is I just have a, one other quick problem here. And we wouldn't often encounter uh, these problems at uh, junior cert level. That tends to be the example I just worked at there. But this is in your book and we'll work through this in a couple of seconds. So I have this stapler here, okay? And the lid of the stapler, as all staplers do, can lift up. And it can lift up to an angle of 120 degrees. And the pivot point is, guess what point the pivot point is, lads? A. Point A, okay? So we need to draw it in its new position, okay? Any idea how we'd 
do that when it's fully extended? Any idea how we'd go about doing that? It's actually easier than what I've just been doing. I'm, go I'm going to pick a few basic points here. I I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to call this point one, two, and three. Okay? And I'm going to work with point one, and we're going to rotate it 120 degrees in a clockwise direction. We already have our center point. A is our pivot point, our center of rotation, our point of rotation, or our origin. That's what, what we call it. Okay, 120 degrees. So I count out, I'm at zero here, all the way around to 120. Okay, join it back. Right, and that's going to be a, a, a1 in its new position, somewhere along that. What do I do then? Point of my compass, extend it to one. And there's one there. That's point one. I'll do it for two. I'll do two in orange. Okay. So again, I get my protractor. Where did I leave that? I'm going to measure how many degrees? Guys? 120 degrees. Yeah. Orange, I said, wasn't it? 120 degrees. Extend it out. And nothing other than the black lines or heavy lines, guys, okay? Point my compass to two. And that's two found there. One more point. And I'll do this fill in green. Three. So, I don't have a line joining A to three, so what do I have to do? Make one. Exactly. Join it. All right. Measure off how many degrees? 120. That's to here. Extend it back out. Same process. And there's three. Okay. Um, issues that we could encounter when doing this. What is very, very important that we take care of when we're doing these? The of yeah, the degree of rotation. Everything. It's all accuracy here is massively important because if you move a degree or two when you're near the point of rotation, it ain't such an issue. Okay. See, look further down here. There's a difference of a couple of degrees here, but the farther you go out that couple of degrees gets bigger and bigger and it means your accuracy, the farther out you go, is going to, is going to um, be affected. Does that make sense? So that's rotations, lads, and um, we'll hit a couple of them in the book now and you'll have this video as well up on YouTube whenever you're stuck revising during Christmas, during Easter. Yeah? Very good. All right. Thanks.